You're watching The 7 from WATE 6 on your side. Good evening. I'm Bo Williams. Glad you're with us. Welcome to The 7. Let's get a look. The Big 7 stories right now. And topping the list for us tonight, no doubt about it, it's the Vols with a monumental matchup with number one Georgia just a week away. Many people are calling tomorrow's game against Kentucky a trap game. Well, last year, the Vols were at their best against the Wildcats, putting up 45 points while only possessing the ball for just over 13 minutes. They scored often and fast, but head coach Josh Heifel says it's not about what accomplishments you've had in the past. It's all about the next game. The only one that matters is as a competitor is the next one, right? Everybody's talking about the last one. You're only as good as your next performance, being able to refocus, regroup, and uh, be consistent, man. What's been great about this team, the reason that, you know, one week at a time up until this point, we found a way to be the best team on the field is, is their preparation and the way they practice. And then at the end of the day, yeah, go cut it loose on game day and, and play harder for longer than your opponent. Balls and Wildcats for the 118th time tomorrow night. Kickoff, by the way, set for 7 o'clock. Tennessee wide receiver Cedric Tillman is back. Tillman announced his return to the lineup on his Instagram account earlier today. You know, last year's leading receiver has missed the last four games with a high ankle sprain. If you remember, he caught the game-winning touchdown in the overtime victory over Pittsburgh. Last year against Kentucky, Tillman caught six passes for 79 yards and a touchdown. Now, here's your schedule tomorrow on Rocky Top. The Truly Tailgate opens at 3. Vol Village will then open 30 minutes later at 3.30. The Vol Walk steps off at 4.45. Neyland's Gates open at 5. And as we mentioned earlier, it is a 7 p.m. kick. But if you didn't get a ticket to this sellout game, you'll have to tune in to the broadcast on ESPN. Next on our Big 7 list for you, before tomorrow's kickoff, there is a pregame flyover with F-35 fighter jets. This is set to happen at 6.55. Now, the F-35s are from the U.S. Air Force's 33rd Fighter Wing out of Eglin Air Force Base in Florida. But one of the pilots is from this area. The other went to UT. So this is a special flyover for both of these pilots. We caught up with Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Hassel, who tells us this is something he's wanted almost all his life. I remember when I was eight years old and I saw uh, some jets fly over at a flyover and I looked up and I watched them go over and I, I that's what I want to do and and now you know over 30 years later that's what I am doing flying over Nayland Stadium. Yeah the lieutenant colonel says they'll be flying around 300 to 400 miles an hour and at 1200 feet above the ground their goal is to fly over right at the end of the national anthem. They're going to try to time it just right. And UT is also marking the 60th anniversary of one of the Vol's most iconic game day traditions, the Vol Navy. According to the school, the tradition unofficially started back in 1962 when radio broadcaster George Mooney took a motorboat down the river to the stadium to avoid game day traffic. The trip, by the way, inspired this tradition. Less than 10 years after Mooney's first trip up the river, 600 feet of new dock space was built to accommodate the growing tradition. Next on the Big 7, the Vols aren't the only ones looking for a win. Local businesses are hoping to capitalize on an influx of fans who are in town for the rivalry matchup. The Vols are setting up for their fifth straight home sellout of the season. And, well, that brings in over 100,000 fans to Knoxville for the game. Local businesses in and around the Knoxville area reap the benefits of Tennessee football continuously winning. When the balls are winning, people are happy and they want to spend money. They want to pay a little extra for their hotel room, go out for two dinners versus one. I mean, it's just a win-win-win all the way around. One owner is likening the business they are seeing now to what they were seeing. When yeah, one owner is likening the business that they are seeing now to what they were seeing when Tennessee won its last championship. It's been crazy. It's been as close to like the late 90s as I can remember. Yeah, this mass influx of people creates tourism compression. This means when the downtown area gets filled up, visitors start going to the outskirts of Knoxville looking for things to do, giving those areas an increase in revenue as well. Knoxville is already on the map as a tourist destination, but Visit Knoxville says having an undefeated football team is an added bonus to the local economy. Continuing our Big 7 coverage for you, a contractor had to be flown to UT Medical Center after suffering a medical emergency. We're getting an update. After someone was flown from Anakista to UT Medical Center, the attraction telling us the person who was taken to the hospital was not an Anakista employee. The person we're being told about was uh, an outside contractor. Now, we've been telling you that person was working under the chairlift today when they suffered a medical issue. The lift was stopped while the contractor was being taken away from the Anakista area. No word on how this person is doing tonight. 
In our next Big 7 story, a man is recovering after being hit by a truck. This happened in Maryville. According to the Maryville Police, a 32-year-old from Louisville stepped off the corner of East Broadway Avenue when he was hit by an oncoming truck driven by a 47-year-old Maryville man. Now, we are told the pedestrian was transported to UT Medical Center with non-life-threatening injuries. In the last check, he was in stable condition. Next for you right now on the 7, we have an update on a fire that has been burning in Warren County nearly all week. This is in Middle Tennessee. Uh, crews managed to get the fire under control earlier this week. According to the Tennessee Department of Agriculture, the fire is 100% contained. Now, it has now burned 70 acres. Today, crews beginning an operation to prevent the wildfire from resurging. We are told the operation will take advantage of wet leaves on the forest floor and attempt to eliminate any fuel that may help rekindle this fire. Rounding out the Big 7 for you with some uh, safety reminders ahead of the spookiest weekend of the year. Uh, Halloween is just around the corner. Of course, it's all about trick-or-treating and all things spooky. But KPD wants to make sure no real scary moments take place in the community. As kids will be out with their families, Scott Erland with KPD says it's important to make sure the trick-or-treaters, well, have on anything that reflects to add to their costumes so that they're more noticeable when they're out and about. And if possible, fill up those bags and buckets when there's still daylight. Make sure that you're really aware of your surroundings and you're, you know, you're looking both ways before crossing the road. You're following all the different rules of the road. We really want people to, to put away the distractions, slow down in those residential neighborhoods, and uh, just use extra caution and pay attention to your surroundings. So whether you're the driver or following a trick-or-treater, take extra precaution when it's time to head out. Also, when it comes to your kid's costume, if you don't have anything reflective or for something for them to wear like that, Erlen says glow sticks or having a flashlight handy is also a great alternative. TBI also posted this on Twitter today with more tips on staying safe this Halloween weekend. They say to check the state's sex offender registry and only trick or treat with trusted neighbors and avoid treats that have loose wrappings uh, that are unwrapped, have puncture holes, or are homemade. So some things to think about.